we have a new guest in this episode. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. And I would like to introduce you to my bunny. Her name is J-Hop and she is named after my favorite member of BTS, J-Hope, because she is definitely a ray of Hobie sunshine. She's very motivated by pellets. Okay. All right. Oh, good girl. I really love having a pet. If you guys don't know, I had a cat named Gato who passed away a few years ago and I have not had a pet in the house since then. So I thought it was about time. She is about three months old, love her. We let her out a lot. I thought since I worked from home, this was a good option because I can give her the attention she needs and she gets lots of exercise out here in the kitchen, which is kind of her zone. Yeah, we've got like a little buddy playground. Right here, there's like a box that a bolt of fabric came in and she's been using that as a tunnel. So I wanted to share with you some of my DIY projects, sewing and non-sewing for small pets like rabbits. All right, J-Hop, let's get started. First up, I needed a custom crate liner pad, also known as a pee pad for the pet carrier. You can make this in any size by measuring the length and width. The inside area here is 18 and a half by 11 and a half inches. The pad is going to be pretty thick, so I added an inch and a half to account for bulk and seam allowance. Cutting pieces 20 by 13 inches. I used five different materials in a certain order, including pre-washed cotton flannel, leftover from other projects, PUL, short for polyurethane laminate, used a lot in making diapers and baby items, and non-slip fabric with rubber dots on one side for the bottom. Here's the order the layer should be in. Polar fleece on the bottom with right side facing up, no slip fabric with rubber side facing down, PUL fabric, I laid this shiny side up, by Annie soft and stable for cushioning, then the cotton flannel. Due to the thickness, it's much easier to use clips rather than pins to hold the layers together. I also used a cup to round out the corners and marked about a six inch space to leave opening for turning later. The inside out method is ideal for many sewing projects and I have another video explaining it better. Back stitching at the beginning and end, sew with a generous seam allowance. I did just over a half inch around the entire perimeter. If you're new to sewing, I'd also recommend checking out my Learn to Sew playlist to understand the basics of using a sewing machine. When you're sewing bulky layers, it helps to increase both stitch length and upper tension. My upper tension was set around 4.5 and stitch length at 4.0. My needle size is 100 over 16 and thread is 40 weight. To reduce bulk at the corners, clip notches or use pinking shears to trim down that seam allowance. Here's the opening I left so that I can turn the project right side out. It was a bit of a tight squeeze and took some time to poke out the corners and tuck in the raw edges at the opening. Back at the sewing machine, using just under a quarter inch seam allowance, sew the opening closed and don't forget to backstitch at both ends to lock in those stitches. Then I went back and stitched about an inch from the edge all the way around to give the pad a more finished look. To be honest, sewing the rubberized fabric was frustrating and I'm not sure I'd endorse this particular product. The material feels kind of low quality and the difficulty sewing didn't help.
The end result is more utilitarian than stylish, but I used fabric I had even though it's not very exciting. The crate liner slash pee pad is washable, and thanks to the PUL layer, if your pet goes number one on it, the liquid won't leak through the bottom. When I placed it into the carrier, my measurements were validated because it fits snugly into the bottom. Bunnies love to chew, and I'm finding out that you really do need to provide toys and stuff to do because they can get bored easily. Empty toilet paper rolls equal basically free cardboard for craft projects. This is something I just sort of made up on the spot, but J-Hop does enjoy nibbling on it and flinging it around. All I did was cut fringe on both ends, snipping it about two inches all the way around. Literally, it takes about a minute, then I bent each piece out and it sort of looks like a spiky wheel. Your pet can chew on it or throw it around, which is what my bunny does. Although watch out because this one ended up in the water dish. Good thing I can always make more. J-Hop Bunny is totally obsessed with these seagrass mats. I get them in a 12 pack from Amazon. I don't know why, but she loves destroying and eating them. And it's a good activity to keep her occupied while I clean out her area every day. Yes, every day. While you can just give a bunny one mat, I also tried making her a hut out of three mats and sisal rope, which is safe for pets. Laying the mats out side by side, I started threading the rope through the openings in the weave to connect them. I guess this is a form of hand sewing? You need to pack a little patience because this did take a while. When all three mats are sewn together side by side, lift up the two outside mats to form a triangle and connect the top sides. The loose ends of the rope I just wove back into the seagrass. I also have a similar larger hut that I bought, but it kind of got jacked up in shipping and it was a little pricey, so this is a more budget-friendly way to make a hideout. This DIY was a big hit with my bunny, although it only took her about a day to completely demolish the structure. So there's that. Toki Hut is a popular maker of hideouts and toys for small pets, and I'd been eyeing the castle and bridge set. It's made out of pet-safe wood in the USA. Keep in mind the processing time to ship is at least a couple weeks. There aren't very many pieces, so the assembly is fairly quick and simple, with no tools required. The laser-cut wood parts fit together like a locking puzzle. Here I am on the floor in sweatpants like a DIY pro. Okay, I'm totally kidding. But it was super easy to figure out and definitely a one-person job. Check it out, a castle fit for royalty. Moment of truth, will J-Hop actually use this thing? When it was all done, I set her loose. She was certainly curious about the new real estate edition, sniffing and nipping at it. With some coaxing, she explored the hideouts and even jumped onto the towers. I think she likes having a high vantage point to survey her surroundings. I'll leave this one with some more cute bunny footage. I keep seeing this style of bunny beds everywhere, so I wanted to make my own version. Instead of using so many layers like the crate pad, I minimized them to just three. Two of polar fleece and the third being a waterproof mattress protector. 
One side is waterproof and the other side is terry cloth, so it's ideal for this project, which will be machine washable. You'll need some type of stuffing or filling like this polyfill. Depending on the size of your pet, cut out square pieces a few inches longer than its body. Accounting for the seam allowance and loft once the bed is stuffed, it will end up a couple inches shorter than the cut size. My pieces were 16 inches square. I marked a center vertical line for stitching later with an air-soluble pen. And a section at the bottom to leave open for turning. The order of the layers goes like this. Mattress protector on the wrong side of the bottom fleece with the terry cloth side up. Flip it over and place the two fleece layers right side together. Pin or clip everything. Use a lot of them because fleece is a bit stretchy and tends to shift around while being sewn. Sew with just over a half inch seam allowance around the entire edge except for the opening. Don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and end. The layers are going to be bulky and you may need to increase upper needle tension at the sewing machine. Now your project should look like this with the hole a few inches long. To reduce bulk, snip off the corners but be careful not to cut into the stitches. Through the opening, turn the bed right side out with the fleece layers as the top and bottom. Gently poke out the edges and corners. Time to get stuffing. Fill up the bed with an amount of polyfill that you feel is sufficient. At this stage, the bed more resembles a pillow, but remember that you'll be stitching up the middle, so the sides will act as bumpers. They will be puffier once you do this. Tuck in the raw edges of the opening and clip shut. From here on out, you'll need to edge stitch at the opening to close it permanently and sew up the middle and both sides. Sorry, the sewing machine part is a little hard to see. The thickness of this project made it difficult to push down in order to really get on camera. I used a long stitch length of 4.5 to account for the thickness.
At one point while stitching up one side, part of the bottom got wedged under my walking foot and more got caught between the stitch lines than I wanted. At least it's on the bottom, less visible side. What I should have done is pushed it out of the way while sewing. It was more difficult to sew and I should have noticed it, but the bed still looks good on the top. And of course, the bunny had to try it out. She snuggled right into it and I rewarded her with some pets. Although in full disclosure, she doesn't usually nap for very long, so she's never in one place for very long. And I do have a disclaimer, I would not leave your small pet alone with textile items like the bunny bed because sometimes these pets can chew through the fabric and you don't really want them ingesting it. So I only let her use the bed when I'm supervising just out here in the kitchen while she's playing around. Just a warning. I do not leave this in her pen overnight. Pets tend to get into everything, so you just want to be careful. And if your pet ingests fabric textiles, I probably wouldn't make this if that's an issue. She hasn't really tried to chew it yet, so you just want to be safe. One more thing, I'm still trying to figure out the best flooring for J-Hop's exercise pen. At first we went with a heavy duty tarp, but she did chew on it and I felt it didn't have enough traction for her. So her current setup has changed. I laid down some soft foam tiles meant for home gyms and took some extra canvas fabric I had, cut it to about a five by five foot piece, surged the edges and laid that down on top. It's 10 ounce weight, which is very thick and she seems to like it, but does not chew on it. She's getting the hang of using the litter box and so far has only peed on the canvas once, but I can throw it in the washing machine whenever it gets dirty. I also wanna say that if you're considering getting a pet like a rabbit, please do your research first. They are quite a bit of work. They're not just set it and forget it and they're very different than cats or dogs. So I'm gonna leave you guys some channels in the description box that I watched before getting J-Hop. Hooks Hollins and 101 Rabbits, both great resources for new bunny owners. Again, they are a little bit more complicated than you might think. So if you're considering get one, do your homework first. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to The Sewing Report if you wanna learn more about sewing and crafts. I'm Jen and this is J-Hop and we're coming at you with The Sewing Report. We'll see you again in the next video and remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun. Oh, hello, hello, hello. You're like, hey. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello, oh boy. Oh, there you are. You're right here.